nope, guy did not read that wrong. I am lending my beloved blue shop truck to a complete stranger, someone I have never met before for an entire week. So he and his son can go on hot rod power tour. Great, that's good. But that also means I've got a lot of work to do on this old gal to make sure that it, you know, makes it and that it's safe. Let's dig in. Yes, I'm still going to do revivals. Yes, I'm going to drive cars home. Yes, that's always going to be on the channel. But look, this is just my schedule right now. We're getting ready for Hot Rod Power Tour. In fact, I should be working on the crew cab, which still isn't done. <laughs> awesome. But I'm also bringing you along. If I'm in the garage wrenching all day, this is here. Here we are. This is what we're, this is what we're doing right now. So I'm gonna walk around and do a complete inspection on this really quick. There's gonna be 96 things that really need addressed, but out of those 96, like what seven or nine are like paramount, you know what I mean? Leaking this, squeaking that, eh. We just gotta get the safety items off and the reliabilities. I don't wanna put someone in this truck and risk their lives for something really, really dumb. For example, I've got a leaking wheel cylinder Let's go ahead and just fix that. That doesn't really concern me personally, but for a stranger, let's make sure they have brakes, right? So let's walk around, see what we got going on. Now, if you've never been on Hot Rod Power Tour, I strongly suggest you check this out. It's at hotrod.com. It's been an event going on for many, many, many years. A good friend of mine, David Freiberger, actually fired this up a long time ago. It's a really awesome test for man and machine. It's mostly classic vehicles, but you don't have to have a classic. You could take literally anything you want. I've seen minivans and Miatas and what are them one leaf cars? I don't know, they run on batteries. There's everything, but primarily you're gonna see a lot of classics and hot rods and even drag cars. Five cities, five days, you drive them to the event. Basically it's the world's largest rolling car show. And at each stop, there's something to do. Usually there's like road course event. They might have drag racing. It's a lot of fun. Check it out. And it's kid friendly. We've been taking our boys for many years. We're planning on taking the crew cab, but like I'm saying, the reason I went ahead and offered this up, in fact, we're lending out several cars this year, is I see often that folks just don't have the time or they're down to the wire, or for whatever reason, they couldn't get their rig together time off, finances, you name it, and I don't want them to miss out. So this year we said, let's offer up some vehicles, and we did. And these are good folks. They just want to participate, and a lot of them want to bring their kids along. So if we can help out, that's how we're going to help out. Lending out some rigs, no big deal. We just got to make sure this thing actually, you know, makes it through the whole tour. We got leakage everywhere. Great. Got the rig up in the err here. And you can see right away this wheel cylinder is leaking all of that brake juice on the outside of the drum, not anywhere by the line or anything like that. So I got one of those on the way. This U-joint is also bad. You could tell because of the way that it is. It's violently squeaking, and I believe there's a cup broken there as well. I already started taking that off. That's why that uh, clamp is kind of hanging down there. I also noticed this. This is new. I've been driving the snot out of this thing, and it looks like the NP-208 transfer case seal, well, you know, it's a walrus now. It's, it's no longer a seal, it's leaking. Spraying juice everywhere. So let's get that fixed. While I'm down here, I got this mess in my teeth. Let's go ahead and replace that filt tray on there. I want to service the transmission which I've never done, believe it or not. See, there's no writing or dates or anything on here. That's how I know I haven't touched it. It's also weeping and leaking. So let's drop this down, see what we got going on, put a fill tray in it, change that. We'll change on the Earl. My mileage 
marker wore off. Use a paint marker, idiot. Okay, I got a seal over here leaking. Not gonna worry about this one, to be honest. This is a huge project. Well, not huge, it's just, it takes quite a bit of time. So I'm gonna ignore that. This thing doesn't leak a drop of oil. The belts are brand new. I think everything else is gonna be pretty good. It's got a new tank in it. I don't have to worry about any rust in there. Well, guys definitely got a couple hours work here cut out or seven wobble pops, you know, change the oil with the filter. tray. Go ahead and service the go forward, go backwards shift machine. I don't know what that looks like. We'll probably want to close our eyes on that. Since I got to pull the drive shaft anyway to replace the rear U-joint, let's go ahead and replace the seal on that new process 208s, you know. And then we got a wheel cylinder, bleed the brakes, and then we'll look over this rig again and just make sure that, you know, I feel good about it. Does it have seat belts? We should check the seat belts. We got the new gauges in here and everything like that, so I'm not worried about that. Overall, should be a pretty good rig, you know, at 12 to 13 miles to the gallon. <laughs> Oofta. Oofta may indeed. Thinking where a guy's gonna start is right in this Wu-Tang joint. Get this out of here. You always gotta move these just precisely to get these bolts out. Why do they make them so long? I don't know. Ugh. I pulled a tray more with this the other day. I actually finished the receiver hitch on it. Did you notice that? Probably not, that's fine. We'll talk about it later. But anywho, put a tray more on here with the truck on the back and I heard it go pop. Now when you shift gears, I got lots of slop in here. So I'm sure it's shot. It's a greasable U-joint that I never greased. So that's fine. You know, definitely not a contributor to why it's bad. This thing can do shocks, gonna ignore that, definitely. Ease this around. There's the sweet spot. Right at about 6.24 p.m. They'll shoot out right in your teeth. I wonder how welded in this thing's gonna be. U-joints is one of my favorite things to do. What kind of a flying creature is this? It's all black with red eyes, I don't know. Stay away. Am I missing a bolt? There it is. Okay. Oh yeah, we got breakage. See that? That means it's it's busted. It's, we got a, the U-joint's bad. Ugh. Just took a pry library to get her off. Oh yeah, she is shot and I ain't kidding ya. She was just drier than an Applebee's steak. Yeah, those don't usually pour out, you know, cause there's grease in them, but. This one, it did. It did. Yeah, there we go. Oh, let's put that back in. Transfer case definitely still has some juice in it. Well, the U-joint cup just shattered and broke off from the owner not greasing the U-joint. Allegedly, okay. That also means that it got really, really hot and the U-joint's gonna be welded into the shaft. Perfect, great. Grand. If a feller's owned a couple junk rigs like me, you know that there's two vital steps in U-joint replacement on these old rigs. First one is soak it down with some sort of penetrating juice, both sides. While that's cooking, adult beverage of your choice. That's step two. The rest of it is just anger and hammering. Chisels, pry bar, probably a torch, some use the sawzall, some use all. I don't know. <sighs> oh boy. Here we go. Hats, 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 hip, ha! You little. Okay, now. Great. Never see that again. Just tap it in there. Surprisingly, I got this one out. Now, the next secret is there is none, but. I do like to clean these up as best as possible. Run some sandpaper through here, something like that. Even if you got a small brake hone. You know what I'm talking about, Jim. Don't sit there and go, what, what's that? Okay, you got one. Get that in here, just a little. We ain't boring it out, okay? But we're gonna clean it up so the new cups just slide in. Can we slide them in there? Can they just, can we ease in the new cups without issue? Well, 
When putting these new buggers in, what I like to do is sink her in a little too far. You know what I mean? Go ahead and just get it in there. Then I'll put my retaining clip in that I just lost. Are you kidding me? Here it is. Then I'll flip her over, bring her down and seat her against said clip I just put in. Then put that one in. How come I got 17 of these? I don't think I need that many. Anywho, let me drop this in quick. New U joint is in. You could probably also tell maybe, spilled slightly, that I went ahead and shot some grease in it while it's in the vise here. Just easier to get to and then I can also make sure that I'm seeing that grease in the caps. There it is. And then once I get her back up in the rig, everything's bolted down, I'll go ahead and shoot some grease on it again and just make sure that it's absolutely full. This one down here looks to be in great condition. So we're gonna go ahead and just leave that be. You know what I mean? Moving on to the output shaft seal on the old T-case here. Perfect time to get this swapped out when we're doing the U-joint. Now, if you're a cautious feller, be in real life for two seconds. If it's time to change a U-joint, do this seal. It takes two minutes and 49 seconds and they're literally a couple dollars. And then you don't have to be going down the highway going, why is my exhaust on fire? Because there's oil doing this. Well, just like that, actually. A couple reasons these wear out, just wear and tear. It happens. Or you could have, for example, in some cases, an output shaft bearing or like a pinion bearing go bad. And the excessive waller in there starts to wear on them and they go. And the most common reason is, well, we like to run them dry, don't we fellers? And when that happens, excessive heat builds up on that rubber there. Uh-oh, now you're in trouble. Take a flat blade screwdriver here, a standard, and if you flip it over, it becomes a seal popper outer, just like that. Wow, it's clean. Clean T of a case. Now, ah, excuse me. You can see I'm moving the truck. I'm just checking for play here, and I ain't got nuns. This here is just a high mileage unit, and I ain't kidding you. Now, there we go. Gonna take a little bit of room temperature vulcanization cream, and I'm gonna wipe it around this. Just a thin coat. Not only is it gonna help ease it in, but let's seal this thing up. Can we not, this not, this prevention, let's not do this again for a while. You know what I mean? I'm gonna just set it in here. This is a muffler reducer that I use as a seal putter in her. But you guys will find something around your shop. Ooh, sounding solid. Let's just tippy tap around the edges. Yep, she is home. Looking good, looking pretty good. Now when I greased up that U-joint, I took the excessive grease that blewed out the side there and wiped that on the tail shaft. So when we guide that in, it's gonna lubricate the new seal. And also the best thing to fight against oil leaks is something made of oilish grease. It's slowly leak down, stop it, or something. Where did the drive shaft go? Oh, it's over here. Mm-hmm, yeah, so yeah. Let's get this U-joint buckled in. Yep. You know, is Martina McBride still alive or what's going on there? I mean, what is she even doing right now? Really wish this didn't have the one wheel peel in it. Maybe we'll fix that someday, probably not. It is really handy though when you're out bouncing around on the trees. Well, really bad news, fellers. Well, take that back. The good news is the seal's in and the new U-joint's in. Bad news is the pinion backlash is excessive. Gears are pretty worn in the rear. So I'm gonna do the right thing and 
just rebuild this and make sure that it's done right. Oh, yeah. What are these? 352s? Okay. Nice. Yeah. Also going to ignore these hodgepodge brake lines that for some reason are 14 miles long. I keep commenting on them over the past few years, but continue to do nothing about it. That's all rebuilt. New bearings, seals, pinion, ring gear. Looks good. Here's that hitch I put in. Oh yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Even put the digital, the lights in it. I'll be dead. Well, since this transgression is scraping on my teeth, let's go ahead and service this. Get this off the list too. I like to leave two on the front of the pan as a hinge. And then one back here, I crack her loose, crack these loose and let it tip normally. Works great on a driveway. Crack loose. Crack loose. Bring it down. Seal break. We got it everywhere though. Why is the seal breaking on every corner? Let's, let's control this. I need more downage. Back here, setting a bad example. I, believe. I just dumped ATF all down the front of my vice grip garage shirt. So dug in the saddlebags and got my going to supper shirt on now. By the who, I get asked a lot, like a lot. Where do I get vice grip garage hats and shirts and stickers and koozies and whatever, keychains? Vicegripgarage.com. There's like 50, 60 different items out there. Youth all the way to 5X, and I ain't kidding you. Looking at the pan here, we got some clutch material, but it really ain't bad. There's a little dippy doo drop right there, weeps out of the valve body, you know, because the clutches are up here doing a clutch thing. But I ain't concerned about this at all. And I drive this thing like Bo and Luke Duke, so that's good news. Good news. Gonna get this cleaned up, throw some fresh juice in her. I like to do this pretty often, actually, on my legitimate going to town rigs like this one here. It's well worth, what's it cost you? 50 bucks? Well, what's a rebuild cost you? Ooh! Oil every hmm, 4,000, if I'm being honest, 4,500, gets away from a guy. You can actually see where the filt tray was sitting. There is some clutch material. I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you but I have seen worse. This is getting up there. Maybe we'll do like a budget TH350 rebuild. I don't know, let me know if you'd like to see that. Well, a guy was really bothered by the fact that when I tipped the pan back, it just, I don't, this is not typical. Got my shirt and everything. Basically, I come to the conclusion it was severely over full, bad. Well, then I got to looking, well, where's the dipstick? It's in it. Normally they hang down to about right here, fellers, in the pan. It's an aftermarket dipstick with a lock thing on it, and it's reading wrong. Basically, when it says it's full, it's over full. So I'm gonna have to keep that in mind, and now I know, I guess, right? The rest of this looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. Gonna get that new filt tray up in there, and, uh, Get the pan back on quick, which cleaned up really nice. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Trick on these rubber gaskets here, cause you know, they come folded up like a magician. You know, it just, it doesn't make sense how they're in the box that they're in. Lay them out in the sun. Let them, put it flat on the ground. Let them, you know, eat, and then they'll get flat for you. Unless, of course, you live in North Dakota, I don't know what to tell you. Set it in front of your wood-burning stove or something. Send a smoke signal to the neighbor. Maybe he can bring over a lantern or something. But anyway, it's advantageous to get the shape into these correctly before you start monkeying around with them. Boy, I could go for 
some good jazz music right now and some mozzarella sticks. You know what I mean? That's buttoned up. Anywho's, I still got drain plugs just dragging in the eyebrows here. So let's keep on going. Get this oil drop down. Oh yeah, this engine's got really good oil pressure. She fills the can quick. I ain't kidding you. It's got a nape of gold in it, which I'll have you know is basically a Wix. However, the Wix Wix brand is obviously going to be better than their other subsidiaries. Just saying. This is a newer center bolt valve coverish year 350, you know. It's got a different flavor drain plug here, threw me off a little bit. Absolutely nothing on the Mega Milk. Good engine, very good engine. Wrote on the filter here, 980 miles. That's since the uh, gauge installation. Easy math for me. Well, I shouldn't say that. It still hurts the brain. Well, I just greased up the front end and the slip shaft on the front drive shaft and kind of running out of things to bang my head off down here. But then I remembered this fuel fill tray and I've just been fighting this thing. The hose clamp on the inlet was literally finger tight. I mean, but for some reason, the filter was torqued on to 7,000 million foot pounds, which I clearly don't understand. It's one of these weird things that, you know, does basically nothing. See? So I'm gonna do the right thing and put another thing on that basically does nothing. Yeah, it's, that's literally, it's the same thing. This is an Edelbroken. This is some sort of Kung Pao up here. You know, there's no brand on it, but this should thread in. Yep, there it goes. It's doing the thing. That's good. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm thinking at this point, we go on right ahead, bring the rig back down, and let's put some Earls in it. You know, we got a couple different flavors of dropping this thing. Fire it up, get that running, go through the shift o -matic there. Then we'll get to my favorite part, the brakes. Nope, really, really don't like working on them. Engine hurdles in, just throwing the old shift juice down the app here. Easy, easy. Oh, made it, thank goodness. I'm just counting cords here since I know my dipstick is way off. Well, let me twirl on the ignition sticks, see what we got. Bring the thunder! Oh yeah. That's smoother than goose poop on a pump handle. I got a big ol' header leak, but don't bother me, I ain't riding in it for 1,500 miles. <laughs> Let's see what the blood stick says. I was wrong, by the way. This is a cheapy chrome twirl over thingamagadget. I thought it was the Locky Doodab one, but it's not. See, it says low, but I know that's not the case. What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? What happens? What do we do? One more cord. Well, I think we're down to my favorite thing regulators. Boy, I've had really good luck with Coopers. And I ain't kidding you, whether it's a legendary Cooper Cabras, you know, or whatever this is, Discover out of threes, XLTs. I think they were confused. They went into a meeting and said AT3, and the guy was like, that's not enough. And then Billy is, how about AT3? And then the CEO was like, yep, that's, that's the name. Seems like it'd be more expensive to keep adding letters, but whatever. Anyway, I got a lot of miles on these and they're holding up pretty good. Wow. For Pete's sake. Good thing these wheels are light because these tires are like 11 to 7 billion pounds. 
Easy, easy, big guy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Oh, I can see I rebuilt this already. It is, we got a severe leak on this one here. Come on now. That's about all the effort I got left today. Maybe we just call her a night. Hmm. Changed my mind, just remembered that I still have full interior and wiring to do on a square body. <laughs> That's fine. Hats, 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 hats. There we go. Oh. Boy, howdy. This thing is blowed out like you wouldn't believe. Wow, I put new brakes in this, didn't I? When was that? Someone bleep bloop it down there in the comments. I know you know. I put new brakes in this, couldn't have been but 15, 20,000 miles ago, but I honestly don't remember because I work on a new vehicle every single week of the year. Okay. Well, let's spray this down. I got new hardware in here, a new ratchety adjuster upper e-brake thing, the new dial up the shoe caliper, shoe guides, everything. Brand new. We got four by four something axle shaft. I think this axle shaft's been replaced. I mean, everything's brand new in this. What am I doing? Why, why am I in here? What's going on? Well, you can tell that it's leaking because of the way that it is. That does not help you stop, fellers, at all. But as you can see, brand new shoes, brand new hardware, brand new adjuster, springs, everything in here. And that might even be a, it is. That's a brand new wheel cylinder. I can't remember when I did that, but it couldn't be too long ago. But that puppy is shot. There's definitely a seal or a walrus or dolphin or something leaking in that thing right there. Yeah, I wonder. Still, I wonder. Who stopped the rain? Okay, we're just, this is, we're rebuilding. Let's get in here. It's in my retina. It is in my retinas. Safety squints engaged. Okay. Hopefully we could bring these shoes back around you know hang them off the telephone line for a while or something i don't know we need them back though is what i'm saying well i'm starting to be able to make sense of what's going on here after we clean this up this might be a case of you buying a new wheel cylinder yep give me the cheapest one you've got <laughs> bit me it just bit me bad yep Nailed it. <laughs> Larry Bird. Speaking of, I got to call him quick. We're supposed to have coffee tomorrow. Here's a better look cleaned up. And if you see what I saw when I say what I mean, it's all brand new, which is great. But we just, this guy, he's fired. Let's get that out of there quick. Two of you just said, well, how do we know that it's not an axle seal? You know, instead of the wheel cylinder. Well, it's usually a lot more violent if it's a wheel cylinder, the splatter is greater, and the smell. Yep, the old diagnosticals. Boop, 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 boop. You could just smell that gear oil from 748 miles away, and I ain't kidding you. Blended by the night, boop, beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, boop, boop. Another way to tell is if you just take your brain, you know, and then look, you can literally see the wheel cylinder weeping out of the cup. That's another pretty good indication that, hey, that thing right there, it's leaking. Boop, boop, goodbye. And boop, boop, install. Got that line dripping, which is good. Gravity feed. Plug her back in right away. Get that plugged up first. Yeah, you know, I see the problem. So that's, that's great. It's kind of alarming as I didn't even really feel that. Must be because I power slide everywhere, you know? Nope, I drive like an old man. Some brake juice. Loop them up a little bit here. 
or if you want to be professional, you can get some of that there break quiet whisper cream. Smear that on there. Tomato, tomato, you know. Well, the brake job here is jobbed. I don't know how many safety stickers that gets us, but you know, it's just a good feeling. I ain't gonna lie. Do I need to rebuild this again since I got it off? DE 1635, brand new brake drum. I just turned this thing. I watched him do it. Lost the receipt though. Anyway, let me bring this around fast. We'll get this tire back on. Yep. Okay. You know, when in doubt, use all of your back. The only muscle, just full back. Rotate it back. Get one started over here, just like this. And then rotate her back the other way. Get the other one started. Now you're centric on there. By the way, these washers here, fellers, there's a front and a back. Yeah, I'm serious. It says it right, if you read it, it says it right on it. See, they're bowed up like Rambo, you know. It's important. Well, there we go. That's a much better looking floor. Nothing's leaking but a guy's wallet. Just finished bleeding on brake. If you ain't got one of these fillers, go get one, okay? Jungle website. Hobo freight, whatever. Takes you seconds, saves you a ton of time. Do it by yourself. Well, I still got her up in the air. Don't want to waste electricity bringing her up again. I'm gonna go ahead and sneak underneath and crack open that rear diff and just double quadruply checky that we're okay there. And then we got a test on this rig. There's no better way to test on a rig than, yep, a dump run. See, I still haul my own trash saves on the wallet, you know what I mean? Okay, what do I need? 3 8 drive, are you kidding me? You know, sometimes a guy's just gotta haul some trash around. I don't know what else to tell you, I guess, you know? What a beautiful day, goodness gracious. Truck's running absolutely perfect, driving great, no issues. Joe is showing up tomorrow afternoon. He's coming in from Kentucky. We'll throw him the old keys of the pickup and I hope he and his boy have a good time. Joe's here, just got here from Kentucky. He's throwing some insurance on it right now just to make sure that he's covered as far as bodily injury and whatnot. And then throw him the keys. What part of Kentucky? Uh, I mean, uh, Western. Western Kentucky. Yeah. All right. Well, you didn't have too far to come then. No, no, no. All right. So what's the plan? Are you taking your boy with you? Or? He's taking his truck, and my dad and mom are taking their truck. Well, you're going to have a truck convoy. Yes. That's kind that's, of complete. That's awesome. How many days are you doing? All of them. You're doing long haul? Yes, sir. That's awesome. Well, here you go. There's the keys. Awesome. Enjoy the ride, man. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. You too. There goes Joe. Hope he and his family have an awesome power tour. I'm sure I'll bump into him here in a couple days and uh, look over the truck, just make sure everything's going good for him. Did throw some oil, coolant, power steering, and a spare tire in the back. You can believe that. Yeah. Anyway, that's going to do it. Thanks, guys, for watching. Appreciate it very much. Maybe I'll see you on tour.